Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video, we're going to be showing you piston failures. Basically, what happened to them, what causes it, and how to fix it. So the main thing when your engine fails, you want to know what happened and what caused it so you can make sure it doesn't happen again. In this video, we're going to show you a whole bunch of different things that cause these pistons to fail and what to fix them. Follow along with us, guys. Thanks for watching. What's up, guys? Welcome back. First, I want to thank everybody that went to EricssonMMP.com and bought some of our merch. Right now, we're doing the 10K giveaway. If you guys buy or have any of our merch, post it on Instagram, post a picture tagging us in your merch, doing something fun with a family, jet skiing, whatever it is, shenanigans, and we're going to be picking a winner from that. I want to thank everybody. It's greatly appreciated. So today's video, we're going to be talking about piston failures, what causes them, and what to look for. So this is a really important step when you're rebuilding an engine to make sure it doesn't happen again. I would love to say that, you know, everything is fixed the first time, but unfortunately it doesn't always work that way. And a lot of times people just think it's one thing, don't look at it, or get bad advice on what caused it. And it happens again, which is terrible. So we're going to be showing you a whole bunch of pistons that I've collected, you know, over the past few months so that I can show you what happened to them, what caused it, and what the solution is. So there's several things that really lead to engine failure. So there's detonation, which this row is mainly detonation. Some of these pistons have multiple failure causes which is the other tricky thing diagnosing this because, you know, you can end up with detonation because the lower rod bearing starts to go, the piston comes up higher, which increases the compression and wipes everything out. You look at it, you go, oh, you know, it's detonation, whatever. You don't notice the rod bearing's failing. You put it back together, it happens again. Same thing with lean conditions. You know, you think whatever oh you need to rebuild your carbs but it's really you know the seals that are bad or you know the case is leaking something else you put it back together and it fails so you really want to pay attention to this stuff to make sure it doesn't happen again so with detonation it mainly looks like sandblasting so when you look you can see all the little pits on the top of this piston this was too much compression for the octane used um so you have to be careful with that. But that's one of the signs. So you can see it on this piston. You can also see it on this one. It's mainly, it looks like sandblasting, which is the best way to describe it. Now the tricky thing is when these start to get hot, you superheat the top ring. The top ring can break and then it can actually put little hard pieces of metal in the top where it looks like a crank failure. So here is another Eaton detonation piston. This one was just the start of it. And this is detonation that's really bad, but it was caused from a rod failure. So basically, the rod bearing failed, which allowed the piston to come up higher, which caused the compression to go past what the fuel could accommodate, and it decided to kick its way out. So that's really the telltale sign of detonation. So there's detonation, and then there's pre-ignition, which... This can happen from lean as well, where the mixture gets so combustible that it starts to explode. Now, lean, you're normally melting metal. So with detonation, my understanding is when it detonates, you damage the air barrier. And when the air barrier is damaged from that shock wave, that's what causes this pitting. With lean, the mixture gets so hot that you start melting stuff. So you superheat the top of the piston. It's very common to melt off the section around the exhaust where you can see here, you know, here are the locating pins in the back. So it melted this whole upper edge off, which is what took out this piston. Same thing here where it superheated it. It basically turned the spark plug into a glow plug, superheated that and started melting its way. I believe this one's melted all the way through. Yep. 
Same with this one. You can see the edge of the pistons melted away. There's some detonation on this as well. And burning a hole. Now, if you look on this one, it got so hot, melted it away, and broke the ring, which happens. And then you can see the imprints in the ring on top, which is where you have to look. You know, a lot of people get confused between detonation, which is this, and debris damage, which is this. Two totally different things. Um, so lean, you can also check over here. This one was extremely lean, heat, overheated everything, and locked it up before it melted. So on and so forth here. So now we're going to debris damage. So this is imprinting in the top of the piston. So like you can see this one, you can actually see the piece of metal there. Um, so something on this one went past the flame arrestor and nicked everything and beat it up pretty badly. You know, this we found taking it apart, but it's still a totally fine engine. Um, oh no, this one we didn't. Sorry, I forgot which one it was. So you can see that piece of debris went past everything. It got caught in a port and beat it all up. But that's debris damage. Here's more where you can see it's actual imprints in the top of the piston. And you'll see it on the head as well. This was most likely a crank failure. I don't remember what it is, but you can see large chunks and detonation. Now the tricky thing with debris damage is the pieces of metal that bounce around actually turn into like glow plugs and cause detonation. So you can end up getting both where I was telling you, you know, there could be multiple failure modes in it, which is where this one is showing. You know, this was heavy debris damage from a crank failure most likely that also detonated the whole top of it, which is why it looks sandblasted. Then we come over here where these are, so this one was loose, this one was loose, this was a crank failure, and this was a defective piston. Now, having defective pistons is extremely rare. I've only seen a couple in about 25 years. This was one of them where it looks like when the piston had these oiling holes drilled, it caused a crack in it because it split the piston in half. This had less than two hours on it. Um, the company that made the piston completely warranted everything for it. We redid all the work for the customer and it was replaced. But it is extremely rare to see this happen. So it's better off not to blame somebody, but to kind of look at all other options before you go that way. So this one, we got it back. Um, this was an engine we built a couple years ago. It had like two hours. The piston came apart. It was all sent back to us. We repaired it all. We fixed it all and we sent it back out completely re completely repaired. Sorry, I can't talk today. So here is a rod failure which damaged the skirt. Normally, when you're damaging skirts like this, it's because there's too much rock. So a piston is not designed to rock like this in the bore. So when you measure a piston, the top of the piston is smaller than the bottom because the top gets way hotter than the bottom does. So in theory, when these things are at operating temperature, although they're barrel, they're tapered now, they end up straightening out. So what ends up happening is when the piston's too loose in the bore, it rocks like this going up and down. And as it rocks, it will start bending the skirts in. And then eventually the skirts will break and then it will go like this and destroy everything, which that is what happened with this one. A shop set this up. This was like a brand new. Actually, I know exactly which one this is. So this was from a major engine rebuilding company. Um, I'll just say in Florida that has three letters that this thing was sent to the customer with 13,000 clearance. Um, this engine had like an hour and a half on it and wiped everything out. We repaired it and it has been running since, but that is what too much clearance looks like. When you start breaking skirts, 
it's either the rod failed or there was too much rock in the piston. There was way too much clearance. Same thing with this. This was a four stroke that came apart. So, but that kind of shows you that. Now, other things that cause damage but don't necessarily destroy the engine, if you see streaking like this. So this is from water ingestion. It's really, really common on freestyle engines. Let me see, I don't know, this one as well. So this, you know, in all honesty, this will not really kill performance. If you get a lot of it, you'll actually hurt the sleeve. But the main thing is you want to figure out why you're ingesting so much water and try to stop it before it wrecks everything. So when you see streaking like that, it is from water ingestion. Or it could also be you lost a head gasket and that's what's causing it. So that's water ingestion to look at. Now this piston, this was another rare one. This engine had sat for a very long time. Um, obviously it wasn't fogged correctly and when they fired it up it had zero compression it brought it to me for me to check it out if you notice the piston rings are completely locked in so the ring groove you can't open them up so this engine's one of the rare ones where you, you lose a ton of compression and the engine's actually not blown up surprisingly if I recall all we did was hone this one and put new pistons in it and it was good to go we replaced it because there was rust on the pin bore, um, and at that point, it's time to replace these puppies. So that shows you, you know, if the rings lock up, it's fairly rare, but it does happen. This one was, I believe this was a cold seize on a fresh engine. Um, it would be the same as basically being too tight. So... That is normally where you'll see a multiple point seizure on it where, you know, unfortunately some of these things can look similar. So too tight, overheating, or cold seizing, where cold seizing, what I'm talking about is if you're running in really cold water, the engine is hot, and then you go idle in really cold water, the cylinder will actually shrink from the cold temperature and all of a sudden, you'll take up all your clearance and you'll lock them up. So this was like a January ride somebody was doing and cold sees that setup. Luckily, we were able to pour acid, put new pistons in it, and it was good to go. Um, these were damaged from getting water splashback on the exhaust. So this engine... He was running a laydown pipe with no water box. And every time he would do a trick, it would splash the exhaust port. Um, we ended up, it did a lot of damage because water will take the oil away, which is what locked all this up and wrecked it. Um, we ended up putting one of our water boxes in it. And it has been running for years at this point. Running great. So, and you can see... You know, people talk about piston wash, which we're going to do a whole video on tuning as well, showing piston wash and what you're looking for. The tricky thing is everybody goes right to piston wash, that that's what you want to look at. And one, it doesn't react quickly, and depending on the dome of the piston, it changes the shape that you want. So on a dome piston, you normally want about a fingernail's worth, like that. That's kind of what you want to see on the top of the piston. But on a flat top piston, because, you know, the fuel is actually washing the piston as it's going over, on a flat top piston, it's less because although the fuel is coming in on an angle coming out of the port, the piston's flat. So less of the fuel contacts the top of the piston, which means the piston wash ends up being less. Um, this was, I think this piston was just in for a general rebuild. This was a race motor we did. Um, but I set it. This is going to be in the piston wash video. I just wanted to kind of show you guys some of it because all of this goes together. So all of this knowledge, so piston wash, reading spark plugs, checking compression, you know, they're all tuning aids to make sure that you're in a good spot. Every setup is different. Some engines run great one way. Some engines run great a different way. So there's nothing really set in stone in these. 
I've seen engines with 180 pounds compression detonate. I've seen engines with 200 pounds compression not detonate. So riding style comes into play, setup, cooling, carburation, everything has something to do with this. But this kind of gives you a good idea what to look at at your pistons and what caused the failure. You know, in general, if it looks like it's sandblasted on top, odds are detonation caused it. If you have melting on your piston, odds are it was lean. If you have debris damage, something went through your engine. Now, whether something fell in through the flame arrestor or your crank's coming apart or a screw came out of a reed valve, something like that. If you're breaking skirts on the piston, odds are it's too much clearance. And if you have streaking on your piston in a watercraft, odds are you're getting water ingestion with whatever you're doing or you have a leaking head gasket. So, but I hope this video worked out for you guys. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, comment down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching.